is this a good position for the mic? Is this a good, okay, good, okay. Animals are in every nook and cranny of this world. The water, underground, within our walls, and of course, on top of the land. I'm Luca of the Good Rich Youth, and I'm here today to talk about animals and what they can teach us about God. Asher and I will discuss different animals and how they affect us. First, I will tell how God shows love through bugs and marine life. Later, Asher will talk about repti mammals, reptiles, and uh, a little bit about birds. Okay, so I'm going to get started now. There's this fish called the remora fish. Um, probably don't know this exact kind of fish, but I think you know what kind of fish I'm talking about. They're the kind of fish that attach themselves to sharks, and that's how they live. Well, I'm using this, basically this whole summer sermon is going to be a bunch of metaphors. But this is a metaphor about how we need to attach the God to God to fully embrace his love. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool what animals can teach us. And I'm just getting started. Uh, so, not all marine life lives off of other marine life. Uh, there's also marine mammals. They need to get a breath. So they can't spend their entire lives in the water, just the harsh ocean. They can't. They have to go up to the surface to get a breath of air. Now, this is like how we can't spend our whole lives without a breath of God. We have to. So this breath, time of breath or being with God does not have to be the church. It can be any time that just helps us get closer to God. Now, there's like a crustacean or the crab, or I mean, I say crab because most people when they think of a crustacean, they would think of a crab. But basically, it, they have shells. It's the one thing that's in common about all crustaceans. They have shells that protect them from the outside elements, just like God protects us from evil with his love. Now, I'm done with marine life because I don't have any anything else that I can talk about really if I'm going to get on to bugs. Bugs, I know this first one is an arachnid, but the spider. I know your first thought is that I'm going to use the spider as a, simil as a metaphor of being bad, but I'm using the spider as good because you know what's even worse than spiders? Mosquitoes. And spiders eat mosquitoes and so the mosquitoes go away, just like God would eat the evil. And that's what spiders can tell us about God, is that eat evil. He eats evil for breakfast. <laughs> so, um, so probably the first thing you thought of when I said bugs, or just ants and other giant land bugs that swarm around everywhere, like how they infest your house. Um, you're gonna, that's, I'm using this as a good thing. This bug section, I'm using a lot of bad things as symbols for good. Uh, but so, you know, the extreme meteors are come, I'll try to get rid of all those bugs. Month later, they're back. Then again, then again. They keep on coming back because the bugs keep on coming back. And you just can't stop the bugs no matter what they do. You have no idea where they're coming from, just like God's love. Keeps on coming because <laughs> because uh, God's love cannot be stopped, just like bugs. <laughs> now, to finish off my part of the sermon, I'm going to talk about bees. Bees, they sting, but they make honey. It's totally worth their existence. Because <laughs> honey is amazing, and it's beautiful. It's just it's just how we need to make other beautiful things, like art or music or any of that good stuff. That's what bees tell us. So I'd like I like to end my sermon, my part of the sermon, on a sweet note. Now, Asher is about to begin his part of the sermon. So uh, thank you for letting me do my sermon. Hi, I'm Asher Leisure, and I love animals. I even made my friend Luca do the sermon so we could talk about animals, because they're pretty cool. And uh, so I'm starting off with dogs and cats. 
Most of us own a dog or a cat, maybe even both. And dogs and cats, they live in our homes, in apartments, and we treat them with the utmost respect and care, almost like they are another one of our children. And, they're, and they love us because of that, and we love them. And someone else that loves us is God. And, and there's nothing that we can do to make God stop loving us, like there's nothing we can do to make our dogs and cats stop loving us. The next mammal is the mongoose. And these mongoose are vicious weasels that are immune to venoms from cobras and other venomous snakes. Cobras, they hunt cobras because uh, they are immune to this venom. And also, the cobras don't have too many predators. So the mongoose, uh, yeah. So, um, we should be like the mongoose and be immune to venomous words and actions. So, the, mo uh, the mongoose is, so live polite and kind and be a killer of those rude and mean words. The platypus is a pretty unique animal. It has a beaver tail, a duck bill, a poison barb, and it lays eggs. But this, and this platypus, very unique. That's how God made him. He also made us very unique. We can do art, make sculptures, build houses, and other magnificent skyscrapers because of God making us this creative. I will move on to reptiles and birds now because my favorite lizard it's called the Jesus Christ lizard or basilisk. They can run on water like Jesus did. And if this two foot long lizard can run on water, I can also do really cool things uh, like, like uh, swim and build skyscrapers. <laughs> um, and to and relating back to the Bible verse, I will talk about the bird. Now, birds are small and worryless creatures because they know God will take care of them and feed them. Just like, and we know that God will care for us and feed us. And in conclusion, God loves you, animals, and plants. He made all of us and loves all of us. We love God and he loves us. And he really knows how to betray how much he loves us through everything we see, touch, hear, taste, and smell. Thank you for letting Luca and I speak, and thank you for letting the youth do the service this Sunday.